give you how to write the equation of a function. I mean, how to look at a derivative now as a function with an x in it, not with the, in this case, I plugged in the one already right here. And when you plug in the one from the beginning, what you get is another number, right, a negative two. But I want to do this now as a function. Well, let me see if this would be the most appropriate example for that. I want to do one that's not too complicated to find as a function. Let me give you another polynomial. So I'll put here now derivative as a function of x. <coughs> so far, I haven't written it that way. So first of all, notation. How do we write this? Well, f prime of x. You can also write y prime, or f prime of x as an apostrophe. You read it as f, f prime, f, so y, or f prime. You read it like that. There's another way to write this. Df, dx. This also means the derivative, so you read this as the derivative of f with respect to x. That with respect to x will make more sense if you take multivariable calculus, calculus 3. When calculus on 2, usually we just do 1, but you still read it as the derivative of f with respect to x. So, derivative. And of course, you had a y, so you can also write it as <coughs> y dx. So, same thing here. Um, derivative of y with respect to x. Uh, let's see. And again, this means slope of tangent line. the slope of the graph itself. Oh, yeah. And what else do you remember it, it was? <coughs> we started with average rate of change, so the derivative was what then? When we took the limit. We went from average rate of change to very good. Instantaneous rate of change. Sometimes this is just called rate of change. And if they don't use the word average, then it's interpreted, it's understood that that means instantaneous rate of change. So they don't always have to say instantaneous. They could just say rate of change. All right, so let me give you an example. Um, let's say that f of x equals, I had a good one. <laughs> I don't want to make it, like I said, too complicated. Let me just do uh, x squared plus 2x. I guess I could put a minus 1 or something. So, the derivative, if I'm going to use the definition using the h form, which I normally use this definition right here, and I use the limit as h goes to 0. Notice that now I'm not plugging in a number, I'm just going to say, well, let's find the derivative of this thing. If you took up calculus 1 already, just kind of forget that you did, because there are there are shortcuts to finding these derivatives, and we'll talk about it when we get there. But many times we can't use those shortcuts for some functions. There are functions where your shortcuts don't work. So we need to find the derivatives using definitions first. 
All right, so this is the definition of the derivative. And again, this, this could be written as dz df dx as well, or dy dx, whatever. I already gave you what the function is, so now you're going to plug in. I mean, when you say plug in, you're not going to plug in the zero, right? Because you would get zero over zero again. But you're going to plug in what this is and what that is. Let's start with the easy one. What is minus f of x? Well, what is f of x? x squared That. It's already given to you for free. And so you put the minus in front of it. I'm going to put minus f of x, which is minus x squared, plus 2x minus 1. That's this part right here. And then let's figure out what f of x plus h is. So you're taking this function evaluated at x plus h. So, perfect. So quantity x plus h squared plus 2 times the quantity x plus h, and the minus 1 is still there. So, all right. Questions about that before I continue? Let me not be stupid now, and if I do forget the minus, just write it there. So let's FOIL, x squared plus 2xx plus h squared. This is just this part right here, what I just wrote. x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. I just FOIL. Then I have 2 times x plus 2 times h. And I have the minus 1. And then Roberto, remember that you have to apply the minus to everything. Idiot. So, there we go. Everyone with me? Now, notice that when we do the, when we find derivatives of polynomials, we started with a polynomial, you will always be able to cancel a bunch of stuff here. So the one and the negative one cancel. The two x and the minus two x cancel and the x squared and the minus x squared cancel. This will always happen when you, have, when you have polynomials. And we started with the polynomial x squared uh, plus 2x minus 1. So let's cancel. This goes away with that. This one goes away with this one. That one goes away with that one. And then the x squared goes away with that other x squared. OK? Just don't get carried away with too much canceling. So we still have the limit. What's left on the top? 2hx plus h squared. What else is in there? 2h. It's 2h. Anything else? Okay. So this whole thing divided by h. I'm going to continue the, the rest on the next page. Let me put the page right below this one. Okay, so let's continue. Limit as h goes to zero. What did we do before that we need to do again here? Factor the h, very good. So let's factor h. And what do we have left in parentheses? 2x plus h plus 2. 2x plus h plus 2. Excellent. What would be the next thing to do? Cancel out the edges. Cancel the edges. The whole purpose of this was to not have zero or zero anymore, and we were able to do this using algebra. All right, so we're taking the limit then of a polynomial in H. This function is continuous for all real numbers, especially when H is approaching zero. So we can just plug in H equals zero. Now I am using the limit, so I don't have to write limit anymore. And I get 2x plus 2. <coughs> so we found the, le the derivative as a function now. This isn't a number. The advantage of this is that if I told you find the equation of a tangent line at the point, uh, it would have to be a point that makes sense. So the, the formula here, the function is x squared plus 2x minus 1, right? 
if I give you find the tangent line at the, the equation of tangent line at the point zero negative one, right? It can't just be some made up point that doesn't make sense. So zero and then negative one. So questions about how we did this problem. Well, if I add, this is, this is in the line, this is the slope of a tangent line when x equals whatever. So this is the derivative as a function now, instead of when we got the negative two earlier. So if I said from there, okay, now find the equation of the tangent line. And that's a good question, actually. at zero, if I plug in zero, I'm gonna get negative one. All right, again, you can't just make up a point, it has to be something that you get for y when you plug in the x value. So you chose an easy one. What would the slope of the tangent line be? We already did most of the work, so you just plug in the zero now. See how there's no limit here anymore? It's because I applied it. No. Oh, you're talking about when I plug in zero? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I thought you were saying that number there. Yeah, I'm the one who's stupid. Thank you. So. All right, so two times zero plus two. <coughs> so I get two. Very good. So the slope of the tangent line at the point zero, negative one is two. I want the equation, though, so what do I do now? We could do the same thing we did before, so y minus equals yeah. And of course, you could simplify this. If you want it the other way, you could say, well, this is a plus 1, so you subtract 1 here. So y equals 2x. Correct. That's another way of writing the answer. So either this one, I'm going to put a rectangle around it too because I didn't specify which one. Questions at this moment? Okay. Let me do an application.